Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Um, hey there. My name is Marto. I lead the cargo contracts library at Open Zeppelin. Uh, open Zeppelin is a security uh, company. We make open source tooling, we do um, audits, and all things security. Um, today, we're going to be talking about account abstraction in StarNet specifically. Um, so, yeah, let's begin. But before we begin, I'd like to know who in here uh, has a good idea what account abstraction is. Raise your hands. Okay. And who of you is familiar with 4337, EIP 4337? Okay. And uh, who of you have ever used account abstraction in any form? 4337, StarNet, Sync. Okay. Pretty much the same group. Um, okay. That's good because today we're going to be talking about what a counter abstraction is, how counts look in StarNet, uh, a brief comparison with EIP4337, and then a few updates on the state of the art of things and some challenges, the future, whatnot. So, let, ah, there's lots of pictures of my cats. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, <laughs> so, um, what is account abstraction? Basically, it means abstracting a few aspects of accounts like um, signatures, this means validation of uh, transactions we send through, abstracting fees, this is paying with any token, letting someone else pay transactions for you, and abstracting nonces, nonces this is to uh, prevent replays, today we have sequential nonces, for example in Ethereum, in uh, many other networks, and the idea is to have different strategies to prevent these replays, um, but um, in many different ways you can have parallel nonces, non-sequential nonces, whatever you want as long as it protects you. Um, what this gives us is first, better security in the form of prevention. We can set limits on our transactions like maximum uh, amounts of funds we can send daily. We cannot restrict transactions to be sent to a, just a set of uh, addresses we deem uh, secure. We can have multi-signature approvals. This is, for example, having um, 2FA, having your, for example, be, have your, who of you have ever used Gnosis Safe or any other multi-sig? That's better. Okay, it's basically the same, having mul multiple signers or maybe having your phone or you, and your ledger uh, send out approval before uh, sending a transaction. You can have guardians, this is someone else that's helping you with this process. An alert system, say that there's a monitoring system telling you there's um, a vulnerability or some suspicious activity on a given contract, it can alert you and prevent you from sending that transaction. You can always uh, send it through, but it, it gives you uh, an extra set of um, warnings. You also can have security. This could be uh, freezing your account if something is going wrong. You can have social recovery, uh, having uh, someone else help you recover your account if you lost your keys or whatever, and this could be uh, key rotation, which is you lost your keys, instead of migrating all assets and privileges to a new account, you can simply change the key and you're done. This also gives us a uh, better UX. You, we can have session keys, custom digital signature algorithms, pay with any tokens, um, getting sponsoring on your token, on your transactions, um, having expiring transactions, recurring payments for subscriptions, lots of things. Now, StarNet specifically. The first thing we should know about uh, transactions in StarNet is that all of them are targeting an account contract. There's no EOAs, uh, so you're always sending a transaction that starts in an account. And the flow is usually like this. Uh, the user sends the transaction to uh, the sequencer node. The sequencer node checks uh, that the nonces uh, are valid, that you have enough funds for, to pay for this transaction, and then it runs the validate function. The validate function is to tell the sequencer whether it can charge gas on this account or not. Usually this has, in order to avoid um, transactions that are not valid, taking too many resources from the node and prevent denial of service, what we do is to limit what this validated can, function can do. For example, it has a hard, has limit, hard gas limit. This is uh, the, just a, a given set of steps you can execute before um, uh, getting out of gas, but without paying it. Um, and if everything goes well, you can execute the execution function, which is the actual, um, transaction. Another limitation that it has is that you cannot read storage from other contracts but the uh, specific account you're dealing with. Um, so 
this there's a question. If every transaction starts with an account, how do you deploy that, uh, an account in the first time? Uh, well, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, the first one is to, you deploy a uh, an account from another existing account. That's very valid. But another way is to do counterfactual deployments. Counterfactual deployments are basically you can predict what address you're going to get when you deploy your account. And so you can send funds to this address first, and then you can call a specific uh, transaction, on this, uh, send a specific transaction to the sequencer that can run the validate deploy function. And if everything goes well, then it charges gas from the account you previously funded, and uh, there you go. One thing to note is that this is very similar to EOAs. Uh, external EON accounts also require you to send funds before you execute your first transaction. So with this in mind, we can talk about the specific interface of how accounts uh, are in StarkNet today. We start by defining a call struct with a two selector and call data uh, that represents a call to a specific contract. And with this, we can build our execute and validate functions that take an array of this call, uh, so we have built-in batching transactions, this is multi-call. And we also have an is valid signature uh, method that is used to verify that message has been signed with the signature that it's uh, on the, with the private keys that are on the, representing this account. And even though this is like the minimal um, interface you can have on an account, there's another set of functions that you may want to have, like valid deploy, which I just mentioned for counterfactual deployments. We also have supports interface, which is like ERC-165. This is an introspection mechanism we use to ask an account whether an, it's an actual account. Uh, there's many use cases to this. For example, EIP-721, uh, uh, the safe transfer function uses, asks a uh, receiver contract whether it's an account or not before sending uh, the NFT. We also have the validate declare function that's uh, related to how uploading bytecode uh, works on StarNet. We won't cover that, and the functions we saw before. So. Now we can compare how ERC-4337 compares, uh, looks in front of um, StarNet's um, account abstraction. So first, the mempool. In 4337, we have an alternative, separate, and parallel um, network of handlers. So we have a different mempool on top of the existing Ethereum mempool, while in StarNet, we have a single native sequencer mempool, um, which is simpler. On validation, um, 4337, we have the bundlers, which are on-chain nodes, off-chain uh, nodes, that are receiving user operations, bundling them together into a transaction, and then send that transaction to the uh, Ethereum's um, mempool. Then the validator is validating that transaction. While on StarNet, we simply have uh, sequencers checking the valid function of accounts. There are some similarities between these two, which is the separation between validation and execution steps, and the constraints we have in the validation step, not reading from external storage, um, uh, limited set of steps or gas you can execute on this um, validation, validation function. This is because 4337 uh, was a huge inspiration for StarNet's model, so it's no surprise that they're similar. Then on execution, on 4337 we have a single a singleton entry point contract where all bundlers are sending their transactions, uh, their bundles, while in StarNet each transaction is targeting a different account contract. So by now you may see that ERC-4337 and account, uh, accounts on StarNet are very, very similar, but StarNet Scene has, since has been uh, influenced by 4337, uh, has the opportunity to be a bit simpler, it doesn't have an alternative network, it has less layers, and also transactions are easier to decipher and inspect by users, blogs, blog explorers, uh, front ends, whatever, because they're a bit more explicit on what they are. So, the state of the art. Uh, right now, there's a living standard that it's still in development. This is being developed uh, jointly by Open Zeppelin, Argent, and recently Bravos also joined the discussion. Um, we have a standard implementation on the Open Zeppelin contracts for Cairo library uh, that you can use for development, deploy it, or you can also use the library to extend it and build your own um, account contracts based on it. We are still missing at the network level non abstraction. Uh, at this point, it's still sequential and managed by the protocol. We don't have fee, uh, fee abstraction uh, on the protocol. There's, uh, I think last week, someone sent me an app level 
um, implementation of Paymasters, but this is not at the protocol level yet, which is better. And we are still working on improving the account detection mechanism. Today we are using SNP5, which as I mentioned before is like ERC165 for introspection, but we are discussing whether it makes sense to have a protocol level uh, mechanism to ask a contract whether it is an account or not. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can give it a try. On that link, you can scan the QR code uh, which uh, goes there. It's the repository with the Cairo Contracts library that has the account, but ERC20, Sun21, and all, all other contracts you know from uh, OpenSubline for Solidity. Um, um, yeah, implement your own account, tell me how it goes, and uh, ask me any questions you have. Finally, there's a pop-up. So if anyone wants to scan, there you go. Yeah, in, if anyone has some questions, we have some minutes to answer those, so feel free to ping me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Any questions, guys? Okay, so I guess the speech was clear. Thank you. And Thank you very much.